Thank you for joining the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayo Dele Ozubakun. Today on the program, North Central Governors leaders urge Buhari to contest 2019 election. But the judge demands McCarthy's resignation as the PDP crisis deepens. And later on the show, Buhari condemns Adamawa killings, others military crackdown on armed bandits in Zamfara State. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju, Mathins Oloja, and Wali Adidayo. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. My name is Abdullahi Omar Gadmaji. The governor of Kano State. I do watch journalists hang out. I don't miss it. I ask you, please don't miss it. Thank you. Welcome back to your groundbreaking program of the year, Journalist Hangout. 2019 may appear far, but for politicians, it is at the door. Political gladiators have begun their permutations again. On Tuesday, the Imo State Governor, Rochas Okorocha, said about 34 governors have endorsed President Muhammadu Buhari for 2019 election. 34. The day after, some governors and other political leaders from the North Central Geopolitical Zone urged, president, urged the president to run again. But the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Metinobu, says the All Progressive Congress will follow due democratic processes to decide its flag bearer. What is going on here? Julie, the first thing I thought was the um, days of the People's Democratic Party, when between President Goodluck, Jonathan, former President Goodluck Jonathan, and one, um, they didn't even print form for any other candidates. Yeah. They said the days, those were the days of the, uh, we don't have vacancy in Asso Rock. The famous quote um, can, that can be attributed to Chief Tony Aneni, no vacancy in Asso Rock. It's always a no vacancy thing in Asso Rock. But as you can see, that led to the ultimate downfall of the People's Democratic Party. Yes. Here we are again. If Owili Rucha Sokorocha is telling us that 34 governors, from my calculation, he has even added governors from the People's Democratic Party. Yes, which we know people like Dave Omahi from Ebony State actually alluded to something like that. Now, how healthy is this call? If we are to believe that 34 governors uh, have endorsed President Buhari, it means he probably left out Wiki and Fayoshi. <laughs> you know? So it, pro it means he probably left out Wiki and Fayoshi <laughs> because those ones, if he said 35, I'm sure either of those guys would have raised hell. So he wisely said 34. But Knowing that Fayoshi can never. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we believe that, then you can believe anything. Hmm. It's too early in the day to say this number of people have endorsed the president. And I think that it is even unhealthy. It's distracting to begin to try to push the president to say, yes, I want to contest in 2019. The president has not told anyone that he wants to contest. As far as I'm concerned, it is the state of health of the president that will determine whether I will run. And, and he's a honest man. If he thinks that his body can't carry him, even if a million governors say they are endorsing him, hmm. he's not going to run. So the, a, a few weeks back, the Imo state governor was stepping out of Hassel Rock and he was interviewed. And he said that everyone is qualified to enter the race, or did I? Yes, yes. He said no <laughs> automatic ticket. Yes. I don't know whether some pressures no have come from here and there, and some people are probably seeing him as disloyal. And this has come as an effective response to, to that suspicions of, of uh, disloyalty, suspicions of betrayal, and all that. He has wisely come out now to say, look, I'm even going to 
<laughs> say it beyond your expectation <laughs> by saying 34. <laughs> so when I say 34, I've endorsed you. What are you going to say next? So it's, it's a very, uh, very, how do, how, how do I describe it? It's a surreal situation when you have governors who should be busy in their states working. Look at what we are hearing that the governors of the North Central. Look, the greatest examples of misrule, the greatest examples of misgovernance mm. are to be found in the North this Central. North Central. Then the governors of the North Central have decided to take their eyes off the ball. I've decided not to concentrate on delivering the, the dividends of democracy to their people. Hmm. They are famously Blame. incapable of paying salaries regularly. When, when you look at the states, that, the, the states that are the most notorious for not paying salaries regularly, or even for forgetting to pay pensions, because hmm. look, they see paying pensions as, a, as a, uh, something that is immaterial. They see pensioners as worthless, as, 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 a, as useless, as a sweet wrap on the floor. That's the way they see pensioners. So they don't even think that they should pay pensioners. Okay, let's try to pay salaries of workers. And some of them are owing as many as seven months, mm. some more than 20 months. And they come up with endless verification uh, exercises. Size. Yorubas will say, Odume lo la fi nkwi le wiri. Nkwa de ba fo Odume wa pe le wiri, wa le fe jaja. If you, you, want, you want to show people that, okay, you can uh, transform into a mass grave, mm -hmm. how long, it, it how long will years. that take? Mm -hmm. So if, if you, it takes 10 years to transform into a mass grave, mm -hmm. when are you going to enter the market? Because for our people, once you get into the market, that's, place, the, <laughs> that's the height of madness. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think these governors should busy themselves with solving problems in their states. A lot of them don't even sit down to work in their state. They're always traveling, telling us they are looking for inve investors. Inve uh, investors outside of the country, but we do not really see those investors. So let them live. What is busy in Abuja trying to solve problems? Mm. Some of the problems are caused by these governors. What is trying to solve those problems? He doesn't need to be distracted at this point. It's a disservice. To continue to go around saying no, we are endorsing this man. Busy yourself with your own work in, in your, your state. state. Let your work speak for Solve you. Solve problems in your state. Leave worry alone. When the time comes, it is the Nigerian people who will show. Because even if you endorse people, the president a million times, it is still the Nigerian people that will, who will determine who leads them. Hmm. Martin. Well, I think uh, I want to associate myself with what he just said. I think one thing that we should emphasize that these uh, governors should face governance. It is still too far and too early in the day because we are just uh, getting out of recession and even during the recession, people are saying we cannot find the, the dividend. And he said something very critical that these governors are notorious for failure to pay even salaries and, and pensions as and when due. And they are now saying that. And you see, within the same context, you see, Governor Aminu Tambowal of Sokoto State has replied, uh, Rochas, mm. he said, the call for all these endorsements here and there, all these 2018-19 discussion mm. is a distraction mm. and it's unhelpful. That's what he said. It's quoted as uh, said today. I see it. Yes, mm. that's I unhelpful. I didn't even read it. That, mm. that, that, they should, that they should face governance mm. yeah. and not calling people for this and that. You'll be speaking in tongues within three weeks. You came out of uh, the state house and told the nation that uh, no automatic ticket for yeah. anybody. Which should be uh, the case. Which should be the case. And uh, a few weeks after, you came out to tell the whole people that in fact 34, saying that even all the PDP governors, mm. uh, by that except two, mm. have all agreed. That's where and where did they agree? You see, that is, where they agreed is neither here nor there, but that. This is a critical time. They should face governance. Mm. They should face governance and not to be talking politics. They should face governance. There are so many things to that, to, to the, like uh, one of our colleagues wrote, there are so many things to restructure. There are so many things to face. Mm. Critical infrastructure, 
potholes all over the place, no link roads in these states from one state to the other, even in the east, in the north, central, everywhere. You are going from Adamawa to Taraba, a place you know very well. How many hours? From Jalingo to, to Yola. Mm. All these places, even uh, from uh, Nasarawa to Benue, it's a problem. But we travel, all this. they should face all these issues and not 2019. Mm. 2019 is, the, is still in the hand of the Almighty God. Mm. And the person they are talking about himself has not been talking like that. You can read his body language. But leave this thing to the party. The, as I said, part of the majesty of mm. democracy mm. Is, is this political Let party. Let me allow issue. Wale to take his... Um, you know, uh, it allow the political party to handle this <laughs> because, issue. Wale, when you look at the way it, uh, this thing is going, normally I don't know the, the disposition of Mr. President to this thing. But Femi Additional actually gave us, you know, a kind of um, um, hint that this thing, had, they wanted to, some governors wanted to raise it at the executive meeting they had in the APC. But it was Mr. President that said, no, no, no. So I don't know. If Ashwa Jubala Tinobu and they are saying, what they are saying now is that 34 governors, as in that, Rocha Sokorocha, I beg your pardon, you know, endorsing Mr. President, what's the implication of this? No, uh, thank you, Oyo. I think there is, there is a big tragedy there for us because looking at what just happened in Zimbabwe, we don't seem to appreciate the fact that we are now in a democracy. The major challenge of Nigeria since 1999 till now is not just a question of rigging towards the general elections or the general election. The average Nigerian politician, especially those of them holding elected political offices, they still behave like emperors, like monarchs, like people who were not elected. The first thing in a democracy is not just a question of voting and being voted for. There is what we call internal democracy, where you have political parties. A person like Rocha or Kurocha from Imo State appears not to understand that at all. Internal democracy presupposes that it is not just one person that will vie for office. At the end of the day, it might just be one person. But then the voting process still has to take place yes. so that those designed by the constitution of the party to pick a candidate that will represent the party at the election, they will still go there and affirm through their votes that it's only one person that came forward and we are voting for that person. If we don't try to institutionalize internal democracy in Nigeria, mm. our democracy is doomed. Mm. You have mentioned, Mr. President, commenting probably through Femi Additional, that is not too disposed to them endorsing him just like that. But he needs to go beyond that. He needs to come out and shut people like Rocha Sokorocha up. Because, see, our problem is not just a question of fixing infrastructure and all those things. We need to build institutions. And part of the process of building institutions is strengthening the internal democratic process of the different parties. Look at the PDP, the kind of problems they are going through. It is because they don't respect internal democracy. They don't, they don't give a damn about it. So the challenge we have here is a sitting governor who was elected by the people behaving like a monarch, talking like a monarch, like somebody who will be there for life. I mean, for God's sake, there should be internal democracy. There should be respect for internal democracy. Once there is no internal democracy, then forget mm -hmm. it. There's nothing like mm -hmm. democracy. But, but Bajire, this, this reminds me of um, December 14th, um, 2014, what actually happened at that um, Teslim um, Balogun Stadium. And when you look at it, during the primaries, they went on primary election and uh, they had an election. So. If it was clean, clear, that Rigorous, was the beginning of the winning streak for the All Progressive Congress. So if something like that, anybody that is about to run against Mr. President in all pro within the All Progressive Congress now, if they see it and they are being intimidated by these so-called 34 governors, according, as alluded to... Yes. Who want to come up? I, don't, I, I think that um, in the fullness of time, this whole thing... Will, will be resolved. Um, there are so many aberrations in our politics, so many aberrations, and um, it's about time we found a way to cast these aberrations aside. God, cast these aberrations aside and for, for solve the problems uh, confronting our democracy. The president. Is the only one who can decide if he's running or not. Hmm. 
if he thinks that he's strong enough to run, he can decide to run. And even Nigerians will know that. They will know that their president is in tip-top shape to run. And if he's in tip-top shape to run, they are going to decide whether to give him four more years or to not let him uh, return to office. So it is not the governors. Governors, since the Obasanjo era, have always seen themselves like uh, the makers. lords of the manor. That thing was promoted by the People's Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Obasanjo, the, the moment Obasanjo told governors to on their own go and choose who will succeed him, the I governors began to see themselves as, as, as bigger than the country put together. It gave them that latitude, I you remember. know, that committee that Fawashi yeah. headed, Fawashi, you know. So, yeah. and in the end, if you see progressively who becomes president, who became president, came out of the fold of governors, who became deputy to, to even uh, uh, Jonathan, came out of the fold of governors. That's the former governor mm. of Kaduna State. Mm. So increasingly, governors have always felt that our democracy is all about them. Remember what happened in the PDP? Just the people quickly. distracted, the, uh, mm. I mean, who, put, who created the problems that the PDP battled with for over a year mm. were just two governors. Okay. Let's quickly take this a breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still journalist hangout. Please stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Journalist Hangout, and we're still looking at the politics of 2019. You will agree with me, Martin, when it comes to a lot of politicians will say, whatever wants to happen in 2019, this 2018, everything will happen. We have a Kitty election, we have a Shun election, we have all the party primaries. Is it too early? to start looking at. Well, it's not that it is too early. We are just being conditioned by circumstances around us that these governors and the, most of the noisemakers around who are calling appear to us that uh, they don't have anything to do. It's the quality of what they do that will dictate our responses. Are you not looking at it that some of them might want to ride on the back of Mr. President? Some of them are going for second term. Yeah, they're psychophants. That's... You know, it happened in 2015. They, they are psychophants. But for somebody to be speaking in tongues yeah, in the, within the same context, it's not, it's not right. Coming out of State House saying, oh, it's automatic ticket. You know, what uh, uh, Wale said is significant about the way we will have confidence in this democracy depends on the way they are behaving. They, they are building institutions. I was talking about the majesty of democracy. And I have been saying so every time we discuss politics here that we, we shouldn't joke with, with the role of political party system in a democracy that you cannot be anything. The last time we said so here, you can't be anything unless you pass through a political party. And that political party, that it is within the same context, I blame the former president who tore his own card. That is part of destruction of that majesty of democracy. That you don't do a thing like that. A political party should be a place. Look at the way people are proud of Republican Party, yes. uh, Democratic Party, oh, I am this. In the United States, I followed NIMPS people uh, in Kuru to one of, their, uh, uh, one of their programs in the United States. And they called uh, different uh, professors from different universities. And the professors were just analyzing their, their, 
the, 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 the policies. And say, no, I'm, I'm a Democrat. They are not what we say, I'm, I'm a Republican. So we want them to, to recruit good people into the fold of this political party so that we can have good governance. Because political recruitment recruit. in Nigeria yeah. is through the political party system. Mm -hmm. All right, we have Sule Wai Sule. Sule Wai Sule is calling from Kano State. Thank you for yes. joining us, Sule. Yes, Ayo, well done. Yes, what's you your see, contribution? Most of these governors who are now calling for, 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 for the adoption of uh, President Buhari are doing it for a kind of bargain. Are people who have failed to deliver the dividends of democracy. Oh. And they think they can, they can hide under the banner of Buhari as they did in 2015. Because most of them, if not for the Buhari eh, 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 they wouldn't have had the chance to be where they are. So now they think they can, they can, they can still come under the umbrella of Buhari so that they too can get the second tenure. And some of them who are <laughs> finishing their tenure, they intend to install their stooges. So that they can continue uh, piloting the affairs of those states from the behind. Also, if we are to take a cue from what happened recently in Zimbabwe, the party, the party insisted Mugabe must go. Look at the power of the party. Exactly. Now it is our so governors that are dictating yes. what should happen in our political dispensation. Why and how? And most of these governors are failure. Okay. Hmm. Thank you, Sule. Thank you for your contribution. Jide, I want to... Ashwaj Bola Metinubu was in Akure yesterday on those states. Yes. And he said, no automatic tickets for Mr. President. He even quoted Mr. President saying he's a Democrat. And, you know, he was quoting him and he insisted that, no, we shouldn't go like this. What was Tinubu trying to say? Because somebody called me this morning and was saying, oh, is, is this an indication that yeah. there's a rift between Tinumbu and um, uh, Buhari? I said a lot of people did not get the <coughs> imports of Ashwaju's message. Uh, if, I were, uh, if I were in his shoes, I would have said the same thing. Because both of us know Buhari very well. Tinumbu knows Buhari very well now. It doesn't take him that long to do a psychoanalysis of people. I have known Buhari since the early 90s, you know? So I know, I know that Buhari would not want a situation whereby he would be imposed on people. Yes, he demands loyalty, you understand? But he will still want to follow due process. Yes. That is why at every point, even when he had cause to disagree with uh, the manner in which he lost elections, he always went to court. Hmm. And just as I said it's yesterday, Supreme court level. Yes, in 2003, Went to court. The adjudication lasted three years. Hmm. But Buhari was patient. Buhari would not want anything that would look like he was forced on other governors. Because what people are doing now is to intimidate people like uh, uh, Kwan Kwaso, whom we know is interested in that seat. Hmm. Intimidate them to the point that they will now leave the party and go to PDP. Already now, uh, uh, newspapers carried reports of uh, the Kassina, uh, the PDP uh, secretary in Kassina flooded with uh, articles posters hmm. and we already seen the, the moves before that, the convention yes the moves that article that. is making mm. and all that and even silent moves that uh, that people like uh Kwan Kwaso too are making it's legitimate in politics for them to look for other places where they think their interests are best out but is the this kind of actions push people to the brink hmm. the, the party belongs to all of them they both they all came together to form this party mm. you cannot intimidate people and make it look like it is a it is a, a crime or heresy for anyone to try to contest against the president the president fancies his chances he's a very strong political force mm. if those people will contest against him he will still defeat them so don't uh, intimidate people and make it look like oh why will want to use his position as president to ensure that he gets uh, nominated by all means. I think this is, this is wrong. And Tinubu is saying that, look, the party has its tradition. The party will follow that tradition. It is not for people to just say, nobody will, will nominate Buhari via, via a yes vote. It, it will still be subjected to the due process. What does it mean about that, if that <laughs> governors cannot um, um, endorse Mr. President yes. in a blanket way? Yes. 
what he's saying is that Mr. President's nomination will come on the convention ground. ground. Hmm. That is where it will happen. It doesn't mean that it's, it's, it doesn't mean that it's disloyal to the man because I know that some some incurable uh, psycho fans now will be going around that we said it we said it that uh, actually the Nobu is not uh, is not lawyer. I am a Buhari uh, person, but I am saying that I will have sp uh, spoken the same way that the Ashwajo spoke, just so that other people will know that in, there is something for them in this party. It's not just for the president alone. Hmm. 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 And Martin. When you, when, you, when you look at what Bola Tinobu said, what, what came to your mind? No, definitely it's the same thing, that uh, we need strong voices like that to, you know, deepening democracy. Talking about democratization, our democracy is still young. I think through the political party system, if we cannot follow due process, mm -hmm. when they are talking about rule of law, the, the rule, the, this is part of the ingredients. They should follow the process of electing they are, if they follow autocratic thing, they will not achieve what the world is saying about Zimbabwe now. People are talking about their military. People are talking about even uh, about the political party system. They say, look, okay. the ZANU PF said, look, it's no longer our candidate. They expelled the wife. Mm -hmm. they, they even dictated what will happen, how their parliamentarians will begin impeachment. And they That's did. That's they directed, so, them to, they directed them to do it. The political party That's is, the way is a strong force. Internal democracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The internal democracy that we want that kind of internal democracy to be stronger yeah, and democracy will be stronger Thank you, for it. Thank you, Martin. Coming up, PDP leadership crisis deepens as Buddy George demands McAfee's resignation. We'll be right back after this breather. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. The People's Democratic Party is still on a free fall. Since it was kicked out of Aso Rock in 2015, the party has become synonymous with crisis. It is more popular not as the major opposition party, no, 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 but the party to beat when it comes to political infighting, confusion, and a rapacious appetite for power. Between 2015 to 2017, the party failed to put its leadership structure in place. It took the Supreme Court to tame the brutal desire by some party members to perpetually hold it hostage. But this has not changed anything. Today, the leadership crisis continues. It has become a massive mess. On Wednesday, another of the eight national chairmanship contenders expressed lack of confidence in the actions of Senator Ahmed McCarthy, caretaker committee. It accused it of favoring a South-South candidate. Would this leadership crisis end anytime soon? Wale? No, I don't think um, it has to do with um, crisis per se. You're talking about this um, accusation by the Chief of the Judge Campaign Committee. The thing is, I think they put the cart before the horse, and I don't think Chibode George should be crying foul now because he's done too late. I mean, I was part of the PDP, being director of organization in Ogun State. What PDP does is that before they start anything, they will have zoned and micro-zoned offices. It is not when the process starts. Before the process <coughs> starts, everybody knows what is coming to your particular area. That will have been agreed upon. I don't know how that thing changed from Padakot because in Padakot, national chairman was zoned to the southwest. But somewhere, and it was micro zone to the southwest, it was zoned to the south and micro zone to the southwest. But somewhere along the line, the whole thing changed. And I think uh, McCarthy is just being made a fall guy. Now, there's no way McCarthy alone will single handedly say he should go to one place or the, or the other. Because whether you like it or not, I mean, I'm not a member of PDP today. The, in PDP, if you are not carrying people along, forget it. You are not going to get anywhere. Others have to vote. Others have to say one thing or the other. McGarvey alone cannot on his own decide that this is what should be. There are others on, also on the National Catechia Committee. And even on the convention ground, definitely he cannot just direct delegates to go and do what they feel they, they are not going to do. So I... But, by and large, what I see in the complaints of Chief uh, Bode George, basically, I mean, primarily about Chief Bode George, is that what the Southwest will have done, I'm, I'm talking about the Southwest PDP, is to have sat together, <laughs> bring up a consensus candidate. We call it shadow primary. Among yourselves, how many people are going for this 
chairmanship mm. thing. Then pick major stakeholders and let them decide, either by way of votes or voice or whatever, so that they will decide that, okay, so, so, and so, reduce, prune the numbers. Because by the time so many of you come out from the same zone, and only one or two are coming out from the other zones, I mean, it stands to reason that you divide your votes, mm. and the people who are not many, they will carry, they will mm. carry the day. So I think the blame should not go to McCarthy, but the blame should go to the leadership of the PDP in the Southwest, which includes Ibadi John himself. Yeah. I know, sorry. Hmm. Did it? This yeah. is, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it looks somehow, because he raised something that, it wasn't microzoned, it was just blankets, south. Mm -hmm. So the likes of Alego Dokwasi came to the fray, the likes of um, Secondus Uche came to the fray, and we had like five other aspirants from southwest, Tarida the Doja, De Nero, Jimmy Agbaji, Bega Daniel, Bode George, and all of them. And I've, I've been told before now that, oh, let them try and get a consensus before they go to the convention. They can't go to the convention, as Wally said, um, fragmented. Yeah, I, I, I think it's beyond that. It's not a, the issue is not simply um, uh, an issue of looking for a consensus candidate because if, the, if you cannot um, vouch for the fidelity of the process, whether you come up with a, f a consensus candidate or not, mm -hmm. you will still not win at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. What they are saying is that at the last non-elective uh, convention of the party, the National um, Critical Committee set up ad hoc committees. And those ad hoc committees are to elect delegates. Those ad hoc committees have five five chairmen who are clearly known to everyone as supporters of secondos. Hmm. People like Austin Opara, Emeka Ehedioha, Dagogo Jack. You don't need anybody to tell you because some of them are even going around as we speak, campaigning for secondos. So what they are saying, because it's not even Bode George, I think even the, the yeah. complaint of Adenino is even more valid than that of uh, Bode, Bode George. George. Because Adenino is a far more potent material in this race, given the gains that they've made going around the country than, uh, than the Bode George, for example. You know? So what they are saying is, look, you cannot, if you, if you skewed a process to favor someone, Definitely, you don't expect others involved in the race to just sit back. And they are saying, look, one of the reasons the PDP lost in Anambra was the fact that the caretaker committee skewed the process in favor of a particular candidate. That they even allowed people who are not PDP members, like students, they brought them, allowed them to vote because they had made up their minds to allow someone who in the view of the PDP members was not even a member of the party to emerge. So at the end of the day, what did we see? I said it on this program, I don't know maybe in the call of the program or in the call of our own discussion, mm -hmm. that PDP members in Anambra voted for the uh, uh, Ekuben governor, mm. you were there as mm, well. Mm. It, they voted for mm. the, for the mm. uh, beyond, apart from Ifean Yuba, mm. who worked against his own party, announced it, paid money to even organize rally for the Ekuben governor. Mm. Other uh, uh, PDP aspirants blatantly supported yes. uh, Obiano. People have because, still of that because too. Yes. The, yes, because the, the primaries organized in, 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 in Anambra was clearly skewed in favor of a particular candidate. So people have said, I've seen even those who in the past could go to war on behalf of McCarthy, saying that they are disappointed in the way he's running things now, that he appears to be patently pro wiki and the rest of them is hobnobbing with wiki. How can you, other, other people in the race, mention one person amongst them who is the chairman of an ad hoc committee? If, you, if five of them, five uh, uh, members are from uh, Secondo's uh, group, you know, Kobane, as even uh, Kenneth Kobane, you know, and George Sekibo, the one who was sacked mm -hmm. from the Senate, is also a, a chairman of another committee out of, the, out of the five. 
five from uh, one person. There's no way they will feel. It, it, it just looks like impunity is the middle name of uh, of uh, a PDP, and it's diff finally difficult to cast away uh, uh, that identity. Martin, you look at it and from the complaints of Bode George and Professor Adenero, and it's as if the governors that still holding this party by Jogula. Well, the governors own parties now. The governors <laughs> have always been owning ah, these parties. Well. It was when the governors, when even Obasanjo in those days, as he was trying to allude to it, <laughs> saw the way Atiku Abubakar held the governors. He had to beg him to, to get a ticket. Because the, he, as vice president, he had the governors like that in his hand. Mm. And you see, the governors are assuming that, yes, that they are, they are demigods, that they can do and undo. But be, uh, beyond that, it is still the same thing we discussed earlier, internal democracy, the power of attitude, attitude of some of these, our leaders, who will be complaining that this, these are the things that they have been doing since 1999. Supporting one, you have been part of the organizing <laughs> secretary. This is what they do. <laughs> you know? Organizing punitive. <laughs> they organize this thing. When are they going to trust one another in organizing, even if they are members of this, members of that? If they had had this as part of the subculture, that democratic culture of organizing things mm. in, in, a, in, in, a, in a noiseless manner. Mm. We would not be yes. where we are. When, okay. when, when grid steps in. Uh, yeah. Let's quickly when take grid in, this, um, all this, of this call. Sh yeah, um, yeah. Sheu Musa Gaban is the Director General of Tunde Adenero Campaign Organization. He's on the line. Thank you for joining us. My great pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. What is the bone of contention here? What well, is your... Um, um, yeah. um, your, your, group. your group talking about in terms of this convention? Well, we were very, very specific because uh, we were the first people who have reacted to it. We had the press conference uh, last uh, Monday dealing with basic issues that uh, deal with uh, internal democracy, taking side, love sidedness of uh, just uh, constituted uh, three out of committee that went around and uh, conducted the election of the three delegates. Just like uh, Babajide has specifically narrated the, the situation, it was a perfect way of putting it. It wasn't about any other thing. It's about fighting for internal democracy in PDP, taking away impunity and rascality out of the system. Uh, people should remember that we were born in crisis. We were not born in comfort. Some of the heroes of, uh, uh, of democracy who fought the military, negotiated with military back to Barak are the fundamental progressive of, uh, of, 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 the, of the PDP. So all along we've been fighting for restoration of internal democracy in PDP, law and order, decency, responsibility, and of course uh, the decorous. And uh, what we find out was quite uh, questionable, finding about five or six people, apart from other secretaries of the committee that we did not mention, uh, that this that was a particular candidate from the South South, and we raised such objections heavily. And of course, later on, uh, Bode George also reacted accordingly. So those are the issues. Basically, the problem of PDP is lack of internal democracy. Is your party, of... is your group also accusing the Ahmed um, Makafi uh, committee of um, uh, complicity in this? We draw his attention. We were not directly attacking him, but we draw his attention to this long sidedness. We told him that. Perhaps he's not aware of all these things, and I don't want to believe he's not aware of it because uh, he is the head of the party. Yes. He ought to have cross-checked virtually everything that they are sending out. And there's nobody that can convince me that uh, they are not aware that somebody like the former duty speaker, Emeka Idoha, is not uh, a frontline campaigner of secondus. Somebody like, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what, what do you call him, Sekibo. Uh, somebody, somebody like uh, Austin and uh, so on and so forth. These are the front lines campaigners of uh, second group as yes. well. So uh, it, 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 it's a bit my imagination if the party would claim that they are not aware. After all, we are the front line uh, uh, in the campaign organization. Our candidate is a candidate to be, but nobody consulted us either to bring somebody that will be part of this committee or the aspirants are not converted as well because I've spoken to them. So basically we have the right to raise issues because this is democracy and it's about the right of every citizen. We are not conversing for any consensus. What we are saying is that provide the enabling environment 
for everybody to have a sense of belonging and a sense of participation. And that is the beauty of democracy. People must agree to disagree. That strengthens the institution of democracy. What we are fighting for is strengthening the institution of democracy. If, it, if your agitation is not addressed, will you go ahead to still participate in that convention? Will your candidates still um, vie for the chairmanship seats? Our agitation has been addressed. The party has replied us. And they have told in specific time they have taken note of our own uh, complaint in specific, and they are going to address it. And they will, of course, uh, print out the, the entire list of the delegates that were elected nationwide, and they will make it available to all the aspirants, so that if any aspirant has an objection about the delegate list, he can uh, easily uh, connect to the party secretary. So I think what we did really uh, have gone a long way in the positioning the party and ensuring that the right thing has been done. So the ultimate aim of our action is uh, to, to lay an ambience that everybody will have a sense of belonging and a sense of participation. I think the caretaker committee did well, they reacted well, and they responded to our, our petition effectively within the time frame. And uh, we thank them for that, and we are urging them to do more, because history will record them for conducting perhaps one of the best transparent conventions or otherwise. Thank you very much. And that um, show, Musa Gaban, is the Director General of nice Tunde Adeniro Campaign Organization. Babajide, now looking at uh, what he just said, and I read what he judges um, press statement yesterday. He was even calling for the resignation of Ahmed Makafi. Is that not taking it to the extreme? No, no because he, uh, he no longer trusts him. And there are many people too who, no, who no longer trust him. Look, even the the loss in Anambra is blamed on um, McCarthy. I know that it will have been difficult for the PDP to win. You know, I, I, I didn't see them winning. In, uh, in, uh, not to but not, not, to, not to come to But when you have your own supporters voting for the enemy, there's no way you can win. Hmm. They are saying that up till the day of the, deli uh, the, of the uh, Congress, they didn't see uh, the, vote, uh, the delegates list. So how does the candidate campaign to people that he does not see? So and, and all of that, they did all of that to ensure that the, 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 the candidate that they favored emerged at the end of the day. You bring a, the current SSG of the uh, uh, River State Government. You bring him, you make him to head the, an ad hoc committee. Whom will that one support, if not, if not uh, secondaries? It's from River State. Because everyone knows that Wiki is, uh, is uh, Secondus's man. It was Wiki that brought Secondus. And now you brought someone who is SSG, River State, current SSG. You made him to head an adult committee. You did not extend that kind of favor to other contestants. Mm. And everyone knows that this person will do uh, Wiki's bidding, will do Secondus's bidding. There's no way you expect people to have faith in the fidelity of the process mm. if you decided to do things like this. And I'm disappointed because I, there's no way, just as uh, uh, Gabam said, that McCarthy will claim not to know mm. that this, this uh, ad hoc uh, chairmanship uh, list was lopsided. Why, um, uh, Martin, why, why is it difficult for the People's Democratic Party to say, Southwest. This <laughs> is difficult. We are micro zoning it to the southwest. The way they did in Port Harcourt. It is difficult because of uh, ambition of some of the members, some of the governors who want to contest in some places. It's difficult because they, they are the ones that are pushing. Because we won't have had to, this kind of situation. Yes, that uh, we should push it to this area so that I can contest in this area. We should push it to this area. They are manipulating it because they are not the, the, the sincerity of purpose is not there. there. That is the issue. <laughs> because PDP, uh, Southwest uh, PDP has never produced the chairman yes. since uh, uh, inception. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Since 1998. Uh -huh. So I was thinking that they will follow <laughs> so what they did in Port Harcourt. Yes. They have been produced. Yeah, they've been produced. Uh, well, definitely they are restructured. North Central has produced, uh, uh, North East has produced, or that's, South, South East has that, produced. That is, that South is, South has produced. That is why I talked about the power of attitude, the attitude of our politicians. They cannot resolve these things in the night by coming conflict resolution mechanism 
alternative uh, conflict resolution mechanism that people adopt all over the world. They talk it, they deny it, they, do, they don't do it, they rush to the press to say, oh, the chairman should resign just because of a uh, convention. A caretaker committee chairman should just resign. Well, if like he that. does not show even handedness, what is he doing there? Huh? I, mean, for, I would have also called for his resignation. The call for you resignation should, have, should not have any way forward. No, no, no. I would, if you are our chairman, I don't know how you will see this. If you are my national chairman, you want me to continue to have faith in you, to believe in you, and you created a situation in which clearly one, one particular it's candidate cute. is favored. Hmm. That same, that same thing you did in Anambra, ensuring that people like Gifian Yuba, with all his money and all that, and he was complaining. He pointed out that some of these things were being done to favor a particular guy. They didn't listen to him. That's so why, what did Gifian Yuba do? He went and teamed up with uh, Bianca Ono and delivered uh, mm -hmm. Ojuku's son, went to the APC, but it didn't matter because he was defeated right there in Unewi. So mm. the thing is, you must, as a leader, you must show even-handedness. That is the problem that we have. If you do not, we can talk about uh, uh, party supremacy. We can talk about uh, uh, discipline within parties. When greed steps in, greed for power and all that, when greed steps in, people throw all of these things out of the window. Mm. That is what is happening. I have Elder David online from Lagos, Nigeria. Mm. Thank you for Thank joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Go ahead with your contribution. Baba uh, Jide, yeah. I thank you so much. You are a historian. Thank you, sir. I like this your program because sometimes when I want to make my conversation, I cannot get through. <laughs> I know you are talking course. of PDP. Mm, yes. Uh, let me tell you people there. PDP has exhausted all his power. They are no more even opposition now. By 2019, another party will take over their position as an opposition party. Okay. This very Congress they want to do so, let me tell you, sir. It will divide PDP into 10 places. Mark ten. it down. 10. Hmm. Mark it down. They may That's not even get out of two states when it comes to 2019. I was a member of that party. What? And those who could have repaired it have left that party. What if they what resolve their differences? Now, what it means then is people don't know what they are even doing. So I tell you that. May God bless you, Paul, for your contribution. Thank you, Elder David, calling us from, from the... Uh, um, Wale, when you want to look at it, because it's critical, the People's Democratic Party gets it right for their convention. If they don't get it right, they are entering election... Um, 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 an election year, 20, 2018 is, is very, very critical for yeah, their survival. And if they go into that convention and we still have court um, processes and we still have a divided house because they've um, as it is now the convention if they go ahead with the convention with this complaint things will not go well and so fall apart you, you, you are just looking at the bigger picture you are not looking at the micro side of it like uh, martin mentioned the other time you need to look at individual ambitions i want to believe that um, the equity state governor uh, your fire or share want to go for VP or something close to that. So if uh, if, if, if a big uh, position, no, if a big position like that is is, <laughs> is being eyed by somebody like that in the Southwest, okay. once the national chairman no, is here, yes. then oh. forget it. I mean, he won't he won't get it because <laughs> the complaint, and as I mentioned the other time, that is not a question of calling for resignation. You have a sitting governor here in the Southwest who is a member of the PDP. No matter what the Rivers governor is doing in terms of pushing this, pushing that, if your house is really in order, it is the governor and your senators here who will work within the party to call the National Caretaker Committee to order. What they are doing at the individual level, to me, with due respect, is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. By the time they don't come together to address issues, mm -hmm. we'll be dealing with this, dealing with that. At the end of the day, those who want to have their way will have their way. You are talking about PDP as a viable party after the convention, before the 2019 election. That has a lot, like he mentioned, I'll say that again, about individuals and their ambition, their egos. Once that is not taken care of, forget about it. Because the major thing you have to look at are the individuals. Are these individuals really interested in the future of the party or what they want to gain through okay. the party? Let me take my caller. Uma is calling us from Abuja. 
Thank you for joining us, Uma. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I already know my name. Yes. Thank you, Ayo, and the Robert J. Okay. If I Robert J. this program is incomplete. Thank you. I want Thank to you. tell you one thing. There is no day I woke up in the morning without crying to, Nigeria, to, to my God Almighty. PDP can never know peace. That's the fact that we are. That's the cause. Hello? Ah, that's strong. Because we want a viral opposition. We want a strong We want the strong opposition. They don't understand the importance of an opposition in the democracy. I think the issue is for PDP lost a big opportunity, you know, to make Nigeria great. They made Nigeria worse than. They met it. So there are people who find it difficult to forgive this party. Remember the day we spoke with McCarthy here? Mm. He said it that if it is necessary, they will apologize to Nigerians. On, on national television to Nigerians. It is that but people are hurting. Mm. People believe that what we found ourselves, where we find ourselves today, is to be blamed on the PDP. So though that guy maybe. Uh, he has lost his job. You never can tell what, what is going through. And people will show their emotions. Mm. Anyhow, people will show their emotions. Mm. PDP lost the opportunity to make Nigeria great. Mm. Even Jonathan said it during his campaign mm. that, uh, we, 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 that his generation has failed because they should have taken Nigeria to the moon. Mm. So just the... Mm. Uh, many people don't want PDP back. No doubt about it. So and they are not helping themselves. But look, in some states, let me confess to you that a state like Plato, for example, people are leaving the APC to join the PDP. <laughs> the big irony. Benway, people are leaving the APC, APC. to join the PDP. PDP. It's like that because some of them are not happy with the way governance is uh, proceeding That's in their state. state. Level. And yeah. they can see the PDP as uh, an alternative. Also, alternative. That's why I always think that no matter what, this yeah. party will not die. Hmm. As long as it's you should not even die for the sake of democracy, democracy. in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. We need hmm. a viable the viable opposition. You know, it is, the, the concept, what the guy is talking about, a very strong term there, is uh, still part of what I always write about and talk about. Uh, elections have consequences. You see part of the consequences. And they lost election in 2015. You still see part of the consequences, and that, yeah, that it's, is it's still resonating. <laughs> that is in part, hearts. Yes, that is part of the reason they should put that house in order. Yes. And it is in national interest because without a, a strong political party, you can't have. The governor of Taraba was with the governor government. of Taraba, and he was good, saying, you can't have we good don't get this convention leaders. right. Hmm. If we don't get this convention right, hmm. we are in trouble. And one hopes that the ruling party is learning some lessons from that and even Zimbabwe. Because hmm. they have their own problems. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank they you, Wali Adidayo. Thank you for coming on the show today. I want to thank you, Martin Odoja. Thank you for your incisive analysis. And as usual, Babajide Koladi Otitaju, we do this together every day. I want to acknowledge the presence of High Chief Johnson Koladi Otitaju. The father of um, Babajido Etodju. Thank you, Daddy, for giving us this genius. <laughs> and, and that's it. So, journalist Hangouts, join us tomorrow for another interesting episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 on all our platforms, as you can see on the screen. And you can also watch journalist Hangouts on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channels, journalist Hangouts at tvcnews.tv and Ayodili Ozubaku. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.